on the back of the Libyan crisis, oil prices are continuing to rise. So let's check in on the uh, equity markets and see where they're faring in trade. This morning, the Japanese markets have opened up uh, in the positive territory, up more than 3% in trade right now. Yesterday, remember, the Japanese market was shut uh, for uh, trade. It was not trading because uh, they had a holiday spring equinox day today. Once again, they're back in the positive territory, and that's leading the gains across the rest of Asian markets. Kospi is up marginally, up 3 tenths of a percent. The rest of the Asian markets should kind of come up on your screen right now. You'll see them also trading in the positive uh, small gains on uh, KLSE, but the Taiwan market is up uh, 3 tenths of a percent right now. The Hang Seng or uh, the Chinese markets haven't opened up for trade. We'll check in on them once they do. On Wall Street, what has happened? Buyers have emerged once again on Monday in uh, U.S. stocks. Sentiment was lifted by the $39 billion AT&T T-Mobile deal that uh, we came to know on, uh, which was approximately f uh, Sunday late night for us here in India. The bulls have held the upper hand for three days now as the S&P 500 has put together its best three-day run since early December. A glimmer of hope about the nuclear crisis in Japan and also investor Warren uh, Buffett's comments about Japanese stocks has also helped sentiment a little bit on Monday. The market volatility index fell 16%. The Dow Jones Industrial has gained 1.5%, similar sort of gains on the S&P 500 index. And the Nasdaq Composite, that has added 1.83% to itself in yesterday's trade. Uh, AT&T shares, they were upgraded by at least four brokerages, the stock rising 1.5%, 1.2%. But uh, on the economic data side, you have sales of previously owned U.S. Home, uh, homes plunging in the month of February and prices hitting their lowest level in nearly nine months, indicating that a housing market recovery may still be a far way off. The National Association of Realtors said that uh, sales fell 9.6% month on month to an annual rate of 4.88 million units, snapping three straight months of gains. The percentage decline is the largest since uh, July last year. The economists had expected a decline of somewhere around 4%, but what we've seen is 9.6% drop. Let's get in a little bit of analyst perspective going. Mr. James E. Glassman, senior economist with J.P. Morgan Chase, joins us on the phone line now. Thanks very much, Mr. Glassman, for joining in. Good morning. Here from India, this is Bianca. Um, although buyers seem to have come out on Wall Street once again, the crisis in Japan, you also have Middle East, North Africa. Does that mean that market volatility will continue? I, I suppose so. I mean, I, actually, I'm quite impressed that given all the turmoil from Japan to Libya, uh, that uh, the markets have done as well as they have. But I think uh, all, all around the world we see that most economies are in recovery. Central banks are very stimulative. And, you know, the Japanese, uh, there's new hope that Japan is getting uh, control of the situation. And there's an awful lot of recovery effort in the area. So I think in general the feeling is that although there's lots of things to worry about, the global recovery is still in place, and so optimism comes back. On the home sales front, though, the actual drop of 9.6% in the month of February in existing home sales, that seems to be greater than even the most pessimistic forecast. Should the markets react too much uh, to this? How should we read this uh, figure that has come out? You, you know, we're reading this as kind of uh, old news. There were reasons to believe that sales should be weak because the state of California had some incentives in, in December that tended to exaggerate sales. People expected them to come off. Mm. Moving away f uh, to Japan, though, you know, I was uh, reading uh, uh, an article in the Bloomberg just a little while back. It said that uh, there's been a, a survey and it's likely to, the Japanese economy is likely to see a rebound in the second half of this year. How do you think that is possible, Mr. Glassman? All indicators are perhaps pointing that the Japanese economy will slip into a recession soon. Yeah, you know, what, what the, the, these natural disasters, what they do is they disrupt you severely near term. So production levels are, are, we expect it to be quite weak in the next quarter, in this quarter, the next quarter. But the effort to rebuild generates new activity, new new spending. You know, the, 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 the effort to rebuild some of those areas will generate more growth. This happens a lot. Whenever, whenever you look at examples of hurricane disruptions or natural disasters or earthquakes, 
All right, so you, you think that this is going to be a short-term in intervention and it should uh, come to a halt sometime soon. Thanks very much, Mr. Glassford, yeah. for joining in and yeah. giving us your perspective. Appreciate the time you've taken out. These are the global signals this morning. I'm going to take a short break. On the other side, we'll talk about the Lal Street and the queues for the Indian markets, the stocks you should be watching out for uh, in uh, trade today. Remember, in yesterday's trade, what we saw was uh, a little bit... Uh, of a downtick uh, in the Indian markets. The closing figure coming in for the Sensex and Nifty just a tad above the day's lowest point. Uh, but uh, when we come back after the break, we'll analyze the cues and also the levels you should be watching out for today. Welcome back to Heads Up on NDTV Profit. The Japanese market has given a fillip to the rest of the Asian markets, which are trading in the positive territory. And the SGX Nifty right now is trading up but uh, three tenths of a percent, 5,401. That's the figure on the SGX Nifty. Pankaj Podar joins us to run us through the queues for the Lao Street, the levels we should be watching out for. Pankaj, what, uh, what are those triggers that the Indian markets are latching onto today? Well, Bianca, uh, good morning first. And if we look at really uh, the, the overnight queues coming in from Wall Street, it seems to be quite positive. Even Asia here uh, has not started on a bad uh, note. Those are, of course, the levels we should be watching out for. And oil, like you said, remains the wild card in trade. Uh, also, let's talk about stocks to watch today. Shafali will run us through the stocks that we should be watching out for in today's trade. Good morning, Shafali. Any stocks particularly that you'd like to pick up and say why they are uh, likely to stay in action today? Uh, morning, Bianca. The first one is uh, Sridham City Union Finance, the company, is looking to raise funds and there's a board meet lined up on March 24th. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can we keep an eye on this one today, Bianca. Indeed, we will. Thanks very much, Shafali. We'll take a short break right now. On the other side is an exclusive interview with WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. Welcome back to Heads Up on NDTV Profit. Quick check on the Chinese markets, which have opened up for trade just a short while back. And you'll see, uh, despite the positive sentiment across Asian markets, Chinese markets are trading marginally in the negative territory, uh, down 0.1.2% each on both the Shanghai Shenzhen and the Shanghai Composite. The Hang, Hang Seng has also opened up a little while back, and that is trading in the positive territory, but only just nominally. Moving on to other news now, in an exclusive interview to NDTV Profit, like I promised a little while back. Now, we know that uh, Julian Assange, the man behind the WikiLeaks, which has uh, the Manmohan Singh government running for cover, he has taken on the Prime Minister's defense. Last week, Assange's uh, website had released a U.S. diplomatic cable in which an embassy official had said how he was shown cash, allegedly, which was kept to buy votes in the 2008 vote for confidence sought by the Prime Minister. Now, this revelation shook the parliament. The government also downplayed the embarrassing uh, cable, saying that these uh, uh, cables can't be verified. But then Julian Assange, speaking exclusively to NDTV's Pranoy Roy, says not only are the cables authentic, but that the Prime Minister's defense is misleading the public. Uh, in the cases of, of this um, Indian cable, which is causing such a, a furor about uh, bribery, very interesting case, um, it's hard to very hard to understand why um, a US embassy official would lie about that to Washington. Um, what is more interesting is um, under what basis was he told that information and, and the embassy official was, was shown that cash. Um, could it have been to, because this was a US issue, uh, could it have been to demonstrate how compliant um, certain um, uh, parts of the uh, Indian um, parliament were uh, with US interests? Uh, or uh, could it have been to um, set up um, or, or frame uh, another group? Um, it's hard to see what benefit there would be. Um, well, those are the top stories and uh, all the news flow that uh, you should be keeping a track of in uh, today's trade. I'm going to wrap up this edition of Heads Up on NDTV Profit. Stay with the channel. There's lots more coming up next.